Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and, re and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you told me in January that the entire world would essentially shut down because of a pandemic, I would have assumed that it was the return of the Black Plague, which could kill over half the population of a city in weeks. If you clarify that, uh, uh, that although many would be afflicted by the virus, it would kill a relatively small percentage of those who were infected, I would have assumed that it must target children. Yet at the very beginning, it was thought that children would be relatively protected from it, and that its main targets would be the old, the poor, and people with pre-existing conditions. This is extraordinary. Indeed, it is an act of almost unimaginable pro-life generosity. And as someone who woke up one day and found himself in the elderly category, I would like to thank you for your consideration. But something is missing. The generosity may be worldwide, but the vision is somewhat superficial. Governor Cuomo has been eloquent in stating the importance of every human life in his daily briefing, yet he has championed abortion laws for the state, which go far beyond the stipulations of Roe versus Wade. We have seen that the virus is particularly deadly for people who have not had good medical care throughout their lives. And yet, amid this pandemic, lawmakers have again sought to repeal non-employer-based health care without a replacement plan. Now, please notice what I am saying and what I am not saying. Catholic social teaching holds that health care is a human right, but it does not demand a particular way to accomplish this. The concern is repealing without replacing. And given the events of the last two months, it does seem rather uh, narrow or superficial, to say the least. More examples could be shown that the worldview that created the shutdown has been very thin in some ways and somewhat confused. We as Catholic Christians have much to offer and there is no better place to start than today's gospel. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Commandments for John before LL strengthen our relationship with God. Thus, uh, he says previously, I give you a new commandment Love one another as I have loved you. So also you should love one another. The relationship does not come from our own initiative, but from God's invitation. Immediately after Jesus tells the disciples that this love can only be made real by loving each other, he promises to send another advocate Advocate is a legal term. It is the person who stands with the defendant to attest to his innocence and support him at a trial. 
Notice, Jesus is saying not a life coach or a therapist or a facilitator, but we need an advocate. Jesus is the first advocate. He stood with his disciples when he was in the flesh. Now he is going to the Father, but will send another. He is needed. Christian life will always be difficult. There will always be resistance. And my experience has been that that resistance begins with me. John is using the language of covenant. Because of the covenant with God, the Jews do that they had a unique relationship with them. They were a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Yet Jesus goes immensely further. I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. God is literally sharing his life with us. The, this, this is far more than God giving us good stuff or even the promise of paradise. It just seems too good to be true. One reason why this, a selection, uh, this section of John's Gospel can seem, I will admit, a bit tedious is that he says over and over the same thing so we cannot fail to understand it. The 17th chapter of St. John is partic particularly makes God's gift of himself to us unmistakable, especially. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. How can it be? It's all too much for me. It just seems too good to be true. Acceptance for me came in two stages. In the other Gospels, the Advocate is the Holy, called the Holy Spirit, and he inspires and molds us with his gifts, one of which is understanding. Once I understood that God revealed himself as, as a trinity to show us that ultimate reality is formed by relationships, and that all of this is kept together by love, then God's invitation to share his life makes sense. Infinite love laughs at boundaries. Another gift is fortitude. Understanding cannot remain in our heads, but must reach out of ourselves, especially to those we find way outside our comfort zone. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The more I attempted to love those I did not find immediately lovable, the more God revealed himself to me, and the more sense the whole thing makes. If it is difficult for Christians to accept the overwhelming love of God, then how can we expect non-Christians to do so? This is, why John, this is what John means by the world. John is in no way saying that physical reality is bad. The world was created by God and is good. But those who have not accepted the God revealed by and in Jesus will never understand what Christians see and why we do what we do. This week marks the fifth anniversary of Pope Francis's encyclical on the environment, Laudato Si. It was written for the world, not just Catholics, and as more than one wit has said, that is wonderful because few Catholics read it and fewer still try to put it into practice. Its key insight is that everything is connected. A non-Catholic neighbor of mine in Queens but was telling me how inspired she was reading it, how true the message of connectedness is, and how admirable the Pope's fearlessness about facing the financial consequences of his teaching. So I asked her, what did she think about the comments on abortion? Somewhat flustered, she said, well, he, he, he had to say that. But the real point was the connectedness of everything in the world. An amazing thought. 
Aren't baby humans connected to us? The blinders of the world are such that even the possibility of including the unborn under the canopy of life went unseen. Catholic social teaching is an extension of our belief in the Trinity. Indeed, it makes the Trinity flesh. It is not bound to an ideology, as Pope Francis makes crystal clear. The Spirit destroys all ideologies. That is why we need the Advocate. John's insight that the Holy Spirit stands with us and supports us is critical. We will never fit into the world because our basic experience is so different. We may find that different parts of the world will accept different parts of our message, but we cannot expect complete acceptance and should be very suspicious if we seem to get it. That is why we need prayer. We need to connect with God. Just as the church's social teaching gives us objectives and principles, but does not tell us how to obtain them or put them into practice, so too the church gives us many traditions and techniques of prayer. It has become so obvious in this time of sheltering in place that we as Catholics have not availed ourselves of all of these options, or sometimes I think the best options that are certainly part of the church's tradition. It was my major objective during this time to work with members of the parish to explore with you some of these traditions. More on that at the end of Mass. We can have the face, well, when we have face-to-face -face relations again with each other, and the world seeks a new normal, we as Catholics will have much to offer. It will not be uni universally or uniformly welcomed. So be it. The Advocate will be with us, and with the gift of wisdom, will give us a commitment to a just society that is as wide as God can see and as deep as he can love.